this new game mode guys <laughs> I gotta admit, it's it's kind of fun. Hi, welcome back to another Alchemy Stars video. My name is Lace, and today we're gonna be talking about Calamity, Codex, Nefarious, Ferocian, and how I managed to hit Legendary right now, rank 174. Obviously, there is still time before the current campaign ends, so like the weekly carry over. However, hitting 174, getting a total damage of about 2.47, about 2.5 mil, that's, I think that's pretty decent. And so in this video, I wanted to share the strategies that I used as well as like, I think the unit priorities moving forward because there is a very clear pattern or like a very clear meta that is used to get like some of these top ranking scores and so I just want to give you guys some context as to like my account standing and what I mean by that it's like the context for my account right so I am a day one player and I have played through every single event and so therefore I have a whole bunch of A3 units and on top of that I do have a lot of the necessary converters and DPSs that are required and so if you guys did start a little bit later then like I wouldn't be overly worried about not hitting legendary or paragon or whatever although I would say hitting paragon is actually like it's not too bad and so with that let me talk about the team comps that I used and the different units that I will be preparing moving forward and then after that I'll also like kind of talk about the play style but like the team comps kind of like talk for themselves all right so before we talk about the team comps let's have a look at the enemy first and the only thing that really matters is the fact that it is the lightning element lightning element combined with the fact that the Aurorian element counter damage it plus 100% means that we want to run forest teams as much as possible. However, only a select few people are cracked out in the forest teams with like 16 maxed out teams or whatever. And so the next best thing is to actually have a forest carry or a forest DPS on every single team as the leader. And then for the rest of the team, try run a mono team with as many converters as possible. The reason for this is because you're essentially going to be converting a whole bunch of the different tiles around the map and then using those tiles to pretty much do like the auto attack damage. So in this instance, we're going to be converting a lot of blue tiles. We've got Barton, we've got Sarah, we've got Carleen. And if I had Klecken, I would actually use Klecken probably over Carleen. And so we're just trying to go around the map, convert as much as possible, and like try to get all those autos off of Midgard onto the Nefarious Ferocian. And so as you can see, this team actually provided me with 786,000 score. And so moving through, you'll see that the team structures are essentially the same. We've got Beryl over here as the forest carry. And then we've got Converter, Converter, but we've also got Defense down over over here. Now this team is a little bit different in that it doesn't run a healer because I have the Victoria as well as the Icy. And on top of that, my fire team is actually quite strong. I think my Sinsa, my Victoria, and my Icy are A330s. And so what that means is that I was able to be a little bit more like Unga Bunga Berserker kind of style with this team. But the general premise kind of stays the same, right? We got the Files and we got the Icy. Moving through, team three, same premise except I've got Oddy. And I just want to say that Oddy is actually really freaking cracked. And the reason that she's cracked is because because she does diagonal hits without any like drawbacks. So for example, if I go back to team one, you see Barton over here. Unfortunately, when Barton does diagonal attacks, they are reduced by 65%. So he only does 35% damage on the diagonals. However, we've got Oddy over here and she does 100% damage on her diagonals. And so if we go back to the philosophy of we're gonna be using auto attacks to chunk down the boss, we've got a boss in the center, right? And if you manage to convert the eight squares around them for them to actually hit the boss, Diagonal attackers are going to have 8 hits on the boss, whereas normal attackers are only going to have 4. And so hence, Oddy is actually quite strong. However, you'll notice that the score was only 472k, and I suspect it's because of the Iridan. I think that if I used Nemesis instead with at least like a breakthrough 2, I think that would have been better than an Iridan. From what I remember about this comp, I just wasn't getting enough like combos off. But you know what? Maybe we'll give it a shot again. And so moving on to team 4, we have our full mono green team. And so as you can see, we've got the D DPS up front, we've got Araya, and then we've got the Uriah on the heels. And then on top of that, we've got the Converters, we've got Pack, we've got Sakara, and we've got a Luis for the two times damage. The Luis, I am actually not a massive fan of in this comp. I would really have preferred it if she was a Nikki instead. Unfortunately, I think the Converters are just way too valuable in this game mode, especially for the ones with the off element captains. All right, and so with all of that being said, you should be able to see a pattern, right? So 
in every single team we have a strong dps up the front as the leader that is on the element of the boss considering the boss is thunder this time we're going to have forest leads for all of the teams and then after that we have about three converters so in this team it's barton sario and carleen carleen in my opinion is quite good but klecken can definitely stand in as well and then on the end we have a healer so in my case it's Phyllishai for this team i've already explained why we don't have a healer here then team three we have the nadine and team four we have the uriah now i just want to point out that this is not really kind of like your hardcore comp although i did get rank 174 and this is the global server keep in mind i am sure the jp server or the kr servers or the c servers or whatever servers they're probably going to be more competitive however this is the strategy that i did find that worked for me and unfortunately because the majority of my characters are at a30 they're not going to be able to take too much of a beating and so as people get more and more a380 teams i can i can definitely see the uriah or like the other healers coming out however the progress of the vast majority of you is probably going to be more similar to me than that and so yeah i'll definitely advise using a team comp such as this all right and so what exactly does this mean for preparation for like all of the upcoming rotations for calamity codex well from this setup it means that we need at least four dps's and that's four dps's for every single element right so for forest it'd probably be something like midgard barrel Oddi, Araya. There's also the new character Paloma, as well as the old seal character Mythos. Out of all of these four characters, uh, actually, you know what? I think I'm just going to switch to a database. Just because, unfortunately, I don't have all of them and I want to talk about all of the different options. So guys, as you can see, I missed out on Hero. I missed out on Robin. I missed out on Dawn. I missed out on Cascada. In my opinion, you need to make sure you have at least four of the DPSs maxed out for every single element. Moving over to Fire, we've got, uh, we've got Charon. We've got Sinsa, we've got Jonah, we've got Smokey to an extent, Graham, Frostfire, pretty much anyone with a high amount of attack. And so to check that, you can come over to the database and then click on any of them. And so I'm just going to go ahead and click on Charon and you're going to see he has 3.3k attack. However, on top of that, he is a detonator. And so when we do fight those bigger bosses or like the multi-tile bosses, he is going to thrive. Remembering the 3.3k attack, moving back, let's have a look at Victoria and she is going to be also at 3.3k. 3k attack which is pretty cracked for a support support character and so just looking at these stats as well as remembering her freaking bleed uh the whole two surrounding clusters chain combo i feel like she does way too much damage for like a quote-unquote support and so when the forest boss comes along i probably will be running victoria as one of those captains and so coming back to be honest you can probably use anyone that is under like the detonator or sniper roles so this one and this one over here just make sure that for every element you have at least four characters and so after you've selected those four characters make sure their equipment is 10 make sure they are as high as possible i would say probably like a330 a340 although to be honest all of my characters were like a30 but i am planning on boosting them all to about like a330 but yeah just make sure that all of their equipment is all juiced up and then let's talk about the rest of the team which is going to be your converters and so again to really maximize the damage in this case we get eight cells outside of like that little bean thing we're almost always going to be using our cross converters so i'm talking nemesis i'm talking bartson over here i'm talking sakari i'm talking maggie wherever she is and the reason that you use the cross converters is because like say you have like a two by two boss right a two by two tile if you go on one of their diagonals and then use the cross conversion what you've effectively done is that you've added one two three four and if you have diagonals five six more tiles to your chain combo and so when you walk up with your normal attacker you're going to actually chunk them really freaking hard for a lot of damage and then if you have the breakthroughs for them especially the preemptive it's actually so massive because it opens up another burst window for you at the very start and so yeah for me in a perfect world for example let's take fire i would be looking at taking ic i would be looking at a max breakthrough maggie which i most certainly don't have and i would look at taking a faust with me as well and so those three plus the alice which is uh down over here if i wanted to get through all 10 rounds this is probably my static for every single boss for Calamity Codex from here on out. And so I would just be switching out the leader. So for example, if it was a fire boss, I'd be running these four characters plus a Regal, for example, or Sharana. And so hopefully that kind of sets your priority straight as to what you're going to need to level or like invest into to get a decent score in Calamity Codex. I think the biggest piece of advice is to actually run the on element captains for each one of the four teams. Because I don't know about you guys, but like I was running four mono teams and it most certainly was not working. Just by putting in one of the counter
to Element Aurorians as the leader, it's already boosting your damage by so much. And so yeah, hopefully that was a pretty good look into like the rationale that was used to kind of like put these teams together. And so with that, maybe let's run through this one over here and see if we can get a better score. All right, guys. And so we are in. And so first off, we are going to take this Aurora time because this is kind of the same for every single map, which is kind of cool. We're going to go ahead and hit them. So you're going to see 5.2K, 5.8K and 6K. So that has amounted to freaking 25K damage just in autos. That was a 10K damage from Oddy. And you'll see a 4K damage from freaking Iridan, which is just not it. It's That's not much damage at all. 3K from that chain combo. We've got a heal. And then after this, I could do something like this uh, and take my Oddy over here and I can get a 14 hit combo and get two hits on this freaking dot guy. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. 3.8K, 3.9K and another one over here, 5.9K. And then a 10K on the chain combo. That's... <laughs> That's already so much better than just running a freaking mono team, my guys. And so I have all of these skills up. I'm going to use my Gronru. I'm going to use my Beverly and then my Dindine. And as you can see, this burst window is getting really freaking set up. It's getting really juiced, my guys. I can see that there is a vacant cell over here. So I'm going to pop Nadine over there and then I'm just going to run it. And so just another tip is that you guys see this one over here, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4. .1 and so what it means is that you actually want like all of your hits to be as late in the combo as possible. And so I don't actually want to hit this guy that early. I want to actually loop back around 1.9, come up here 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, 2.6. I take it back, it's at max. And so it is just going to be 2.5 times. And so this would have been way better than if I had just gone for this square over here, right? See, that's a 1.2. That's, I'm missing out on whatever damage that would have been. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Take the longest path over here. 2.3 over here. However, it is enhanced. I want to come over here, 2.2, 2.4, and then max. And so guys, as you can see, the pathing is so incredibly important, right? So let's see, 3.8. And then it's going to go 5.9, uh, 7, 6.5, and like another 6.5, which is massive damage. So chain combos, chain combos, chain combos. And we are going to end on 159k and it's only turn two. And so for me here, I see a couple of different paths. I can take the green path first and just kind of bide. And the reason that I would want to do that is because I see my Iridan coming up. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Iridan's going to give me another potentially six yellow tiles and I could have a 12 tile combo up on the boss. Additionally, I can see that this boss is going to do the thing where he stays in position after he attacks. And so what that means is that I'm going to have all four of these cells on him at least, and maybe even more, but like you guys can probably see the other alternative, which is just to run it down over here. I'm going to take the slightly patient way and take this route down here and like hopefully hit my chain combo on that guy over there. You could argue that it's actually worth changing leaders right now so that I can get three hits on him. And so I might actually go ahead and do that. So I'm going to change to Iridan for example example. And so I'm going to get the full damage from Oddy as well as some 35% damage from Gronru as well as the 100% damage from Iridan. And so let's go ahead and do that. Let's come down and I can actually come down here and do the big column down over to that guy down there. And so I'm actually going to go ahead and do that and hopefully wipe out a couple of these squares, turn them hopefully to yellow. And if not, I've got Iridan coming up anyway. And so as you can see, I got pretty lucky. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight squares. And I've got another two from Iridan coming coming up. So that's going to be pretty sweet. All right. So this is kind of annoying. I've got one, two, three guys blocking my way to the yellow squares. I've got Iridan over here. I can do that to get one, two, and then I can actually put another one down here to just like bolster up my squares. However, I don't think I'm actually going to be able to get Aurora time with that. There might be a way if I use these yellow squares over here. However, my brain is not functioning right now. So I'm just going to take the easy way out and just do that. And so as you can see, my prism tiles are on the field. I'm going to hit that over there and then let's just go and whack this boss down. So as you can see, I've got a 14 hit chain combo. It sucks that we're just missing out on the 15 hit for Aurora time, but this is going to be big damage. This is, this is going to be massive. So it's a, at 182k right now. And then what are we going to get to? Oh, wait. Oh my God. I made a big mistake. I made a big, big mistake. And that is not changing my leader back to Oddy. Oh my God. Oh my God. That, that would have been so big. That would have been absolutely big. Holy moly. And so as you guys can probably tell, that really screwed my run over. I, I would definitely have to restart because that was a major, major blunder. But I think like all of that thought process is probably enough for you guys to get going with this. And so with that, I am going to show my obvious tilt and just quit it. <laughs> 
Oh god, dang it. <laughs> and so hopefully that is going to help you raise your Calamity Codex rank a little bit more. And so before we say goodbye, I would like to ask how you guys are going with the Calamity Codex. Are you guys scoring way higher than 2.5 mil? Did this strategy help you at all? And so whatever your answer may be, I would really appreciate it if you left your thoughts down in the comments below because it means you've watched up until the end of the video. But otherwise, please consider a sub, like the video, and a follow. And if you would like to support the channel, we do have a membership thing and affiliate links down in the description below. But otherwise, as a little glowy, orby, nefarious, ferocious thing once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.